What's up everybody, I'm Mitch. Welcome to another episode of Fit for Moto in the Garage. If this is your first time being here, welcome. Today we're gonna to be going over dirt bike levers. Anybody who's ever ridden a dirt bike for any amount of time knows what it's like to bend your levers over and how much of a pain in the butt it is to try and use those. So today we're gonna to talk about aftermarket levers. What are some choices? Do you really need them? How much do they cost? And which ones do I recommend? So with all that in mind, let's do this. So, first things first, let's start with some choices. Now, there are as many different types of aftermarket levers out there as there are dudes at your local track. You can get a ton of different kinds. There's ASV, there's these reflex levers, and really when it comes to price, I can't honestly say that some are really that much better than the next when it comes to the average guy like you or me. So, so when we're talking about choices, really what it comes down to for me is something that is what's considered unbreakable or, or a lever that's gonna be harder to break than the stock lever, and I'm gonna show you how. Now you're gonna notice with the stock lever, it's really just one piece of metal, right? Like there's no, there's no joints on it, there's nothing like that. So when it hits the ground, of course it's gonna be pretty easy to break. But when it comes to an aftermarket lever, destroy that packaging like a Neanderthal, you'll notice here that they actually have some joints. And what's great about that is that when you hit the ground, what's gonna happen is that lever is just gonna push up a little bit. And so it's less likely to bend like that and more likely just gonna snap back into place. So what's great about these is generally they're a one-time investment. They are quite a bit more money than your average stock lever. But like I say, once you buy them, they're fairly tough to break. It's not to say that they're never going to break, but I've been buying these on every bike that I get, and I have yet to actually break one of these levers. Whereas these stock levers, well, like, you can break them all the time. A simple tip over in a corner on a track or a trail, and you're gonna break that lever. So that's the great thing about having these, is that it's a one-time investment, pop them on the bike, and they're really easy and good to go. Now, I think these reflex levers that I got from RockyMountainATVMC.com, here's the thing. They really should start sponsoring me. I, I drop their name all the time on these videos and I get nothing from them. So if they're watching these, hit me up. Anyway, I got these, I think they're about 50 bucks American a piece for these levers. So like I said, a little bit more expensive than your stock lever, which is probably gonna be 10 or 15 bucks. But they are kind of a one-time investment and they're gonna pay you dividends when you're on the track of the trail and your day isn't over because your lever didn't break. So again, I've got a clutch lever and I've got a brake lever here. I tried to put uh, you know, one on each side, so that way, depending on which side you tip over, you're gonna be fine. Now, the more expensive levers, you can get levers that are up to like $120 or maybe even more. Uh, generally, again, it's been my experience that they're really not that much better than these type of levers. I have yet to break any of these, so as far as price goes, by all means, you don't have to get the most expensive ones. There are some cheaper and just as good choices out there. Now, which ones do I recommend? Honestly, I recommend something that's probably middle of the road. You're not gonna get one of these levers that fold and sort of unbreakable. You're not gonna get one of these for super cheap. That being said, I do recommend getting one of these definitely over these stock levers. Trust me, I used to carry some stock levers in my toolbox for when I would break one of these things, and it's still just a complete pain in the butt. I've fallen over lots with one of these levers on. It just snaps back into place, up and away I go. These reflex ones seem to be pretty good. The ASV, the more expensive ones, obviously those are gonna be good as well. But it, generally speaking, any type that has some sort of hinge on it that's gonna lessen the likelihood of the lever breaking is gonna be a good choice. Now, as far as the installation goes, these are really easy. All you have to do is take the one bolt out that actually holds the lever in place, insert the new lever, adjust it to where you want it as far as distance from the handlebar for your rider preference, drop that bolt back in and away you go. These new levers are actually really easy to put on and they're a great lifesaver.
And that's it, that's all there is to installing some new breakaway levers on your bike. I do recommend keeping your old lever if it's still in good shape with all the little bits that come with it. Keep this thing around, throw it in your toolbox, maybe throw it in your pack if you ride trails. Maybe you or your buddy might need this thing in the event that something does go wrong with that. It's nice to have these backup levers that cost you nothing kicking around, so hang on to these. I hope you liked the video, I hope it does something for you. If so, like, comment, and you know what I'm gonna say it, smash that subscribe button for me, I really appreciate it. If there are some other how-to videos, maybe there are some parts you'd like test it out you'd like to see me try leave a comment below i'll see if i can get to them and we'll see you guys in the next how-to video